Former NCAA swimmer Riley Gaines says that she was assaulted on the campus of San Francisco State University where she was invited by Turning Point USA and the Leadership Institute to speak about her views opposing transgender athletes in women's sports. Now she was again a former NCAA swimmer. She competed against a transgender athlete by the name of Leah Thomas. And she felt, Gaines felt that the inclusion of Leah Thomas was unfair. Now she tied fifth place, Gaines did in the 2022 NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships. In March of 2022, Leah Thomas became the first openly transgender athlete to win an NCAA Division I National Championship in any sport after winning the women's 500 yard freestyle with a time of four minutes, 33 seconds. Olympic silver medalist Emma Wayant was the second person to win at uh, I think about she was one second too late, I guess. I mean, these competitions are incredible. Like these are incredibly fast swimmers, you get the point. But anyway, this has been a controversial issue to say the least. And so Gaines uh, was invited by Turning Point USA, uh, an organization that we have been very critical of on this show. So we see what's happening here to go onto this campus. Yes, I acknowledge it is a campus located in San Francisco, an incredibly left wing part of the country. And this is provocative, I totally understand that. I mean, and her Twitter profile is also, I think, meant to be somewhat provocative. Mentions that she's a spokeswoman with Independent Women's Forum and that there are only two sexes. Now Gaines, was in fact accosted by trans rights activists after giving her speech. And I wanna be clear, there were trans rights activists or people who disagreed with her in the room as she was doing her talk. And they were incredibly respectful, even though they engaged in protest as well, I think they did it right. But what you're about to see is what I think is incredibly counterproductive for anyone who actually gives a damn about transgender rights in this country, let's watch. So after that, Gaines had to be escorted by campus police into a safe room where she remained barricaded for literally three hours. There's documentation proving that, which we'll get to in just a moment. In fact, she couldn't leave the room until members of the San Francisco Police Department showed up to escort her out of that barricaded room and to safety. She says that campus police did nothing to help her get out of the room that she was barricaded in. Although in the video, you can clearly see that they escorted her to that barricaded room as that mob of students were going after her. Now documentation again does prove that she was barricaded for three hours. So Golden Gate Express tweeted out a thread, you know, kind of documenting key moments of this whole incident. So Riley Gaines has been escorted out of the event into a side hallway in the SHSS building. Students were following through trans women are women or yeah, and then there's a timestamp, 8.31 p.m. is when that happened. The next tweet that's relevant at 11.21 p.m., SFPD announced that those who stay to protest are now unlawfully congregating and will be arrested if they refuse to disperse. And then finally, at 11.38 p.m., Riley Gaines left the campus. So clearly from 8.30 to 11.30, three hours, she was in fact barricaded in that room.
as people were outside uh, saying some pretty terrible things. And you know, it was threatening. If you're someone who's barricaded in a room and you know there's people outside who are screaming at you and they're that animated, it could be intimidating to say the least. Uh, I do want to also just go to one more video um, showing that some members of that group uh, floated the possibility of Gaines paying a ransom if she wants to be let go. Let's watch. Tell her to pay us. Tell her to pay us, and then she can go. Ten bucks each. Because she probably got paid for this, so we could get paid for it too. Now it's worth noting that uh, there were trans rights activists in the room as she was giving her talk. And I wanna show you what a, I think a productive protest looks like. Let's watch. You go, they honor you, they name their woman of the year. And so I went to this convention, it was in January, it was in San Antonio. And so I go to the convention, obviously not in support because the, the award was immediately meaningless. So they're holding up signs the whole time, showing their support for the transgender community. There was also a Q&A portion where they there was disagreement. They exchanged, you know, their comments, their disagreement with one another. I think that's productive. But what happened outside of that room? What happened for the three hours following her talk? Not productive. I don't understand how anyone would think that this is going to win over hearts and minds in any way. Okay, so I know exactly where it went wrong, in my opinion. Uh, and so this is broken down into, in my opinion, to two very distinct protests. Now, it's it wasn't in in real in real life. It moved fluidly, and it was generally speaking the same people. But let me tell you what I think went right and wrong. First of all, Riley Gaines, uh, she's conservative, so I probably don't agree with a lot of her opinions. But I I don't care if I agree or disagree with her opinions. Uh, should she be allowed to speak? Of course, right? So uh, the protest in the beginning was. Perfectly great. Uh, so they uh, enter the room along with supporters. They stood in line, got their uh, place. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, they asked her good questions. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, they weren't supposed to make signs. They took flyers from TPUSA and made them into signs. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, the people outside are chanting trans rights or human rights. Nothing wrong with that. You go, you protest, you chant, everything's good, right? So this thing was almost a picture of like a a pretty good exchange on a college campus in America, okay? But when she's leaving, you gotta let her go. You can't get in her way. That's no, 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 guys, that's terrible, okay? So he, let's talk it through. So number one, she says she was hit. I have no, I don't know. I didn't see it in any of the videos. But it should, could she have been brushed, you know, or hit, or so? I don't know. It's certainly possible, given the mayhem that was happening there. But there's one thing we do know that is clear. The cops thought it was not safe for her physically to leave that room for three hours. That's not good, okay? And and so, guys, chanting is one thing. That's it's not just like neutral. It's good. Chanting is good. Protest is good, right? But when she, somebody feels physically unsafe and you won't let her out, then you've lost the moral high ground. What'd you do that for, right? Think about it this way, guys. Shoe on the other foot. Imagine it's like. Right wing protesters, and they're chanting crazy stuff about trans people. And the person in there is a left wing speaker, as trans speaker, right? And she's scared for her life in there. And the right wingers are chanting, chanting. And the cops say to the trans activists, it's not safe to go outside. We're worried that they're going to harm you, right? Now, what would our community, the left, say? I mean, we, you know. You know what we would say. Yeah. We would say those right wingers are monsters. Let her out, let her out, right? So don't be hypocritical. Please, I'm begging. I know it's so hard. We get into our each other's into individual camps, and no, everything on the left has to be right. Nope, everything on the right has to be right. Right? No, that protest got out of hand the minute it felt that it became physically unsafe. Right? Do not lose the moral high ground. You had everything right until then. Please. The thing that's frustrating about these situations is that these exchanges, you know, if it's done appropriately without devolving into violence or intimidation, it could be productive, it could be persuasive. That's the way that you actually make progress. And I think the biggest mistake that trans rights activists make is just assuming that everyone already knows everything they need to know about transgender people and how they need to have their rights protected. But you gotta understand that for a lot of Americans, this is these are all new concepts. And so People, 
it takes time for them to, to learn these new things, to be accepting of new things. And I think this knee jerk reaction of, oh, you're just a transphobe, you're a terrible person. I'm, so, I'm too, no, I'm exhausted. It is not my job to educate you. Okay, well, understand no, that if that's your mindset, then you're never gonna win, you're just not. And if you think that you're gonna win by intimidating and bullying people, that's also not gonna work. That actually turns a lot of people off. Yeah, if look, if you're an activist or you're in this sphere in, in any way, and you say, well, it's not my job to educate you. Well, no, okay, it's not, You, but then you gotta go home. Because then, then you're not in this conversation, right? So like here, I'll use my example. When Muslims were attacked, and pre-Trump too. Remember the Republicans had these giant hearings. Keith Ellison went and spoke eloquently as only back then, though, I think the only Muslim American, I forget if Andre Carson was in already. And and they were saying that, look, basically we're dangerous and we should be kicked out of the country. If I said at the time, I'm not even gonna cover it on the show. I don't have to explain it or what Islam is to anyone. Well, how does that help? Well, they don't know about Islam. They didn't grow up Muslim. They don't know that my, that. There's, well, instead, what I did was I engaged in debates, three hours to Sam Harris, yeah. everyone on, on Twitter, Bill Maher, everybody else, right? And we and we got people, to, some people at least to realize, oh, Muslims are also human beings. Can I, can I actually jump in on, on an example that's actually very personal to me and to you, right? Mm -hmm. When I first started working her, working her, <laughs> when I first started working here, Cenk, because of the Turkish bubble like he, grew up in, didn't see my perspective on the Armenian genocide and the reality of it, let's just keep it real, right? I could have just written Jank off and be like, oh, he's a bad person, he's a bad person, he can't be saved. No, except we engaged in some pretty fierce debates. We engaged in uncomfortable discussion, but to me it was worth it because I understand that most humans are good and most minds can be changed through persuasion, through understanding, through engaging in these exchanges. Now look, there are people out there who don't engage in good faith debate. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about ordinary people who are open minded to some extent. And guess what? He changed his mind. And I think the transgender community along with transgender activists can do that. I just think some of their tactics turn a lot of people off and they're totally blind to that, which amazes me. Yeah, and in that case, I don't know that they were all trans activists. They might have been leftists, generally speaking, right? And guys, if you like, don't again, just don't lose the moral high ground. It doesn't, it doesn't help your cause at all. And if you say I don't have to help my cause, people should already be on my side. You're not okay, but they're not. So we got to help to make sure we win elections, so they don't pass all these terrible bills against trans people. They pass like hundreds and hundreds of bills against trans people, right? So we've got to find a way to to convince. The average person here, I'll give you the last example, guys. So, for example, when you talk about sports and trans people participating in the sports, um, the, I think it is an interesting and legitimate debate to talk about hormone blockers and how much of an effect they have on athletic ability. Agreed, yeah. Right? So, when trans folks that are activists like Benny Carollo or anyone else makes that point, that's good. You're engaging, and a lot of people don't know that. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's great, do that, right? And that might change some minds. By the way, and then it's okay if the right winger or the moderate or whoever or the newbie or even me says, hey, you know what? I'm not sure I'm quite convinced yet, but let's keep talking about it, right? How much do the hormone blockers affect athletic performance? That's a legitimate debate. Yeah, exactly. When the right wingers say, oh, trans people are mentally ill and we should take away their rights, that is not a legitimate debate. We fight back ferociously on that, but politically and rhetorically, because they're gonna win on the politics of it and they're gonna keep passing those atrocious laws. Unless you convince a majority of Americans that you are right. And by the way, guys, we've been through this a hundred times and we've been through it in TYT history. We were right about gay marriage. And what do we do? We fought and we fought and we fought and we convinced America that we were right. Now I know they're retrenching a little bit, but overall, we if you do it the right way, you can win and we have won. Yep. And we're gonna win on this too. But not if you go over the line, then the right wing will have cause. To, to be extreme in the opposite direction. Final thing I'll say about this is, we need to foster an environment that allows curious people to ask questions without fear of being labeled all sorts of atrocious things. 
Some people are genuinely curious. Some people don't know all the answers and want to ask questions. Simply asking the questions doesn't automatically make them bad faith actors who are just trying to trash the transgender community. I think when it comes to youth gender medicine, when it comes to transgender athletes, there are areas that I think are deserving of some debate among good faith actors. And we need to be open to those conversations and open to those debates if we devolve into acts of violence or preventing people from being able to exercise their right in, in speaking. I think that it's only gonna do more harm than good. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.